And now let's go on with the story of Joy Tanchi, a pretty, sheltered young lady who knew nothing but the love of her family and the goodness of God. Until one night, the unthinkable happened. Ever since we were little, our childhood was a very, I would say, very happy. I say we really grew up with parents who were very loving, my siblings and I. We were very super close to me as a family. I felt like I was a very innocent person. I know when I was younger, wala akong boyfriend, wala akong mga crush crush, bihira lang. I was 15 years old. My parents, nasa Bible study sila, sa Makati. I grew up in Antipolo, sa medyo malayo. I was in the kwarto ng parents ko. I just felt my, my gulo, Some, there's something wrong. They're fully armed. They got in because there was somebody delivering rice to our house. When I was hearing all the sounds of I just said, you know, Lord, I think something's wrong. I don't I don't know what it is, but you know, you just protect us. My Younger brother, and then my two younger sisters. Lahat tinale, and then they were tied and put on the on the living room floor, face down. I was, I was really nervous. So yung mga Jewish, binigay ko sa kanila. <laughs> then after, sabi niya, Ayun ako makita mo ginagawa ko. In my mind, okay, papatayin na niya ako. But then what happened was, he raped me. I never had a boyfriend. I never kissed anybody. Um, so I never had any sexual experiences. I mean, I was really a good girl. I, I really, you know, obeyed my parents. I was very innocent. So when that happened, like, I just, you know, I was crying while it was happening. But then, yung badil kasi nasa ulo ko eh. So, wala talaga akong magawa. Pagkatapos niyan, dinala niya ako sa iba-ibang mga kasama niya. So, there was, so parang pinasapasa ako to seven different guys in different places in the house. So parang what was sacred, our home, like... So every room, there was like a bad memory. Even the bathrooms. Um, even my own bed. I was scared because I invited the lawang friends, two girlfriends, to come over, my friends. So I was praying, I said, Lord, sana hindi na lang sila dumating. They brought me out to the living room. Nakita ko yung bag ng kaibigan ko nakabukas, nasa floor. So sabi ko, oh my Lord, you know, I don't, I hope, Hindi nangyari din yung nangyari sa akin, sa kanila. May nag-doorbell. So natakot yung mga magnanakaw kasi, oh my gosh, you know, there's somebody there. Kaya lang parang, 
Hindi ko alam kung bakit they trusted me. Sabi nila, sige ikaw, puntahin mo, and then sabi, palayasin mo lang sila. So, they let me go, they untied me, pinalabas ako, tapos pumunta ako sa gate, tapos nakita ko yung parents ng isang kaibigan ko. Sabi ko lang, um, may mga magnanakaw sa bahay. Um, so, sinabi ko sa kanila, pero nag-acting ako, sabi ko, Okay, bye! See you later! Tapos, pumasok ulit ako sa bahay. Na hindi ko alam kung klaro yun sa kanila kung anong sinabi ko. Nung bumuling ako sa bahay, They were threatening me na and sabi, sige, papatayin na namin kayo. All of a sudden, ang decision nila, they took a hostage. Then they escaped. Lumabas sila. Lahat sila lumabas. So, we were waiting for somebody to rescue us kasi hindi namin alam kung talaga wala na sila. We were so scared. And then all of a sudden, may nakita kami nagpa-flashlight sa, sa mga bintana ng bahay namin. <laughs> Pero yun pala, may dumating na iba pang missionaries na kaibigan din namin. And then, they rescued us. A few, siguro, maybe an hour or maybe two hours later, dumating yung parents namin. You know what? Um, your kids are safe. Walang namatay. Everybody's okay. Pero kailangan yung kuusapin si Joy. Kasi, may nangyari sa kanya. <laughs> so for me, you know, that was the hardest. I was <laughs> Because <laughs> I knew they were teaching Bible. <laughs> They're having a Bible study, and then you know, you, you parang isipin mo diba if you're following God and you're really putting Him first, how can God let that happen to your children? My parent, my, you know, of course, my mom just cried. My my dad, they hugged me. I was thinking. If my God, whom I serve, cannot protect my daughter, I said, is it really worth it serving him? You know, that night, my mom just stayed with me in the bed. I couldn't sleep, and she just hugged me the whole night. She doesn't also know what to say. As a mom, you know, someone who's always protected me and taken care of me. I had dedicated her to the Lord when she was a child. And so I had to trust that God would do what was best for her. And so I was able to just, just comfort her all night that way. Then the next day when my brother found out, he was so upset. Because feeling that he's my older brother, dapat he protected me. Wala siya dun kasi that night. Like my dad, hindi ko ever nakita siya mag, mag cry. I mean, he cries, but not like this. Like I would see him, he'd be studying the Bible, but he's crying. Because I'm sure, you know, as a, as a father, where you're very protective of your daughters. The last thing you want is for, for that to happen. So God also dealt with his heart, like, um, are you willing to trust me? You trust your children still to me? And so I told the Lord, I don't understand. I don't see any good coming out of this. But I said, I will trust you. And uh, I pray that you will help me understand. And I remember my mom, she'd look at our photos when we were when we were little, when we were kids, and then she'd see photos of me. You know, as a kid, very innocent, very happy child. And then she knew that, you know, all of a sudden my nayare. God spoke to me in a very still small voice. And what he said to me was, Diana, will you trust me? Will you trust me even with this? that I can cause something good to come out of it. Would you trust me? And then I thought to myself, 
If I turn away from God, where would I go? Me as a person, I also felt like I was stained. If my kulay ang childhood ko, parang it's like white and yellow, you know, happy colors. And then yung moment na yun, yun ang yari, parang it's like a black hole. All of a sudden, yung buhay ko na interrupt. So I, I had to really, you know, surrender it to God. Say, Lord, I know that you can still make me pure again. You can still make me whole. And so all of us, I think we had to go through healing in my family to really soul search and to ask God, Lord, what is your reason? But but man allow to sa amin to our family. I saw evil that, that night. I cannot believe how people can go to your house, abuse people, steal things. I felt our rights were so violated. It's hard to explain it. I think that's one of the worst tragedy a father can experience happening to your daughter. I never cried uh, more in my life. So when I saw her, she came out of the house and her first question was, Mom, did I do the right thing? And then she broke into tears and I said, yes, you did, Joyce. She said, Mom, they had a knife at my throat. They, they were threatened to shoot me. And I was afraid to scream because I thought if I scream, my brothers and sister, sisters who were tied up would be all killed. I said, is it really worth it serving him? We've prayed for God to protect our house. We're doing God's will. And he didn't, he didn't protect our daughter. And then I thought to myself, what if I just turn away from him? What's the use of following God? Who is in charge? Perhaps God is not in charge. Perhaps the truth about the sovereignty of God it's not really true. He, certain things are beyond him. And the amazing thing is how God moves in our heart. Where will I turn to? If I turn away from God, where would I go? He's my life. He's my love. He's my everything. God loves her more than you love her. I thought about it and I said, okay, God, I'm going to trust you. I will hold you to your promise. And I won't let you go until I see the good that you're promising me now in this tragedy. I do not know what good will come out of this. But I claim your promise. Something good will come out. But I said, please, Lord, show me. Lord, what is your reason? But but man allow to sa amin, to our family. God is sovereign. He's, he's in control of everything. And we chose to believe na kahit nangyari ito, mabuti pa rin siyang God. Because mahal niya kami, because sovereign siya, may dahilan kung bakit nangyari ito. Hindi lang accident. Ang decision namin, ng family namin, let's, uh, we'll even make it a testimony. Yes. We've decided to share our story. Because feeling namin, pag itago lang natin to, how can God also use it for good? And when we made that decision, you know, God really brought healing. We also made decision to forgive. Ano ang balak ninyo? Yung mga polis pumunta sa bahay namin, pinakita yung mga picture na baka ito sila. So, meron akong na-identify doon, pero hindi kami nag-press ng charges, hindi kami nag-file ng case. We just said, as a family, God will protect us. Si God na lang bahala. Maraming salamat. Salamat po. We felt it won't be good for her to go through a physical exam, to go through the questioning of the police, to let her go through the whole thing again. So we said, we will just leave that to the Lord. People had asked, actually asked us at that time, which would we like to have someone go after them, you know, to kill them? And we said, of course not. You know, we leave them to God. The months went by. I was still in school. I would, I would run out of the class and go to the bathroom and I would cry. So as a student, siyempre nahirapan ako mag-study. Kasi nahirapan ako mag-concentrate ng, ng studies ko. Parati ko iniisipan yung nangyari. Pero yung maganda dun, kasi I was going to a school called Faith Academy. Yung community na yan, as a school, very close. It was a Christian school. 
the teachers, alam nila kung ano nangyari sa akin, tsaka sa mga kaibigan ko. Kaya super sensitive sila, pati sa, sa studies namin. Sinabi nila sa amin, you know, if there are times na kailangan nyo talaga, you know, nobas lang ng kwarto, and then you need to be alone, okay lang may naintindihan namin. Super blessing talaga na we shared it. We shared it with our school community. We also shared it with our church. Lumapit talaga ako kay God in desperation. And I felt so close to Him. And every time I would read my Bible, God would reveal to me so much in His Word. I think sa grabe na nangyari, like feeling ko as a person, Lord, this can't be an accident that you would allow something this terrible to happen to me. So my only option is to trust you. I learned to accept that yung nangyari, nangyari yan kasi people don't know God. So yung gumawa ng ganyan na masama, it's kasi hindi nila kilala yung Diyos. We know that these robbers are lost, they need the Lord, and if they were be locked up in jail, I would even go and share the gospel with them. God made me stronger as a person, like, mas aware ako sa surroundings ko. God allowed me to trust men again. He allowed me to also share my testimony with others. When I started sharing with people, marami din nag-open up sa akin na, you know, nangyari to sa akin, similar sa story mo, or na-abuse ako, sexual abuse by a relative. So marami nag-share sa akin. So God allowed my story to help others. Most of the time, if when women are raped or abused, hindi nila sinasabi sa ibang tao. Tinatago nila. Malaking sikreto. Kasi feeling nyo at first, super pangit to, like, nakahiya pag may, you know, if people know ano nangyari sa akin. But yung perspective namin, sabi namin, okay, we won't let this be something like that. We will share it. There are many, many women that have been abused, but they're afraid to talk about this. But when my daughter opened up, they were willing to come forward and talk about how they were abused. Another thing, if you ask me the blessing is, uh, God made our congregation know that their pastor is not invulnerable. That we also sympathize with people who are hurting because of what happened. When I talk about forgiveness, when we talk about love, when we talk about God's sovereignty, it is not theory. And we, we are not saying truth without the context of experience. And I think people are looking for authentic believers, authentic models, how to reconcile God's truth with reality. And I realized that, of course, there are scars in her life as a result of it. But when the scar is surrendered to God, it becomes, a scar tissue is stronger than regular tissue. So her giving that, that area of her life to God and trusting Him then enabled God to work. And she's a deep person. She has a blog called, called Teach With Joy. And if anybody goes there to read it, you would see how she's very insightful, uh, what this, this matured her uh, as a person who understands spiritual things in a deeper way. Number one that God is sovereign. He said, no matter what happens, you must realize there are no accidents in the lives of God's people. God could have stopped it, but He didn't. So God is sovereign. The next thing is, you must realize God knows everything. He knows. He, he was not taken by surprise. He is not only in control, but He knew this would happen. But He didn't stop it. But God knows what is best. So the pillar of truth is God knows what is best for me. And the third pillar of truth is God loves us. God loves me. God loves my daughter. And the last one, I tell people, God is holy. He has no malice. He does not just purposely allow people to suffer unnecessarily because God is good he's holy he's really good so with these pillars of truth I said uh, we will keep on serving him 
and trusting that God will cause something good to come out of this tragedy. I, I met a wonderful man. Um, he, his name is Edric Mendoza. I met somebody who's a great man. He really loves God. He really loves me. And uh, when we got married two years out of college, I mean, he's been an incredible husband. Very, he, he knew about my story. I shared it with him. The more he felt that like he wanted to protect me and take care of me. So I was so blessed by that because I didn't feel rejected. It never crossed my mind uh, I had to enjoy she's gonna have baggage or parang madumi siya dahil she, she had this experience. What kicked in were really more of the protective instincts. Parang sige ako bahala, I wanna take care of you. The irony that I find in all of this is that when she told me about the incident, she actually said, you know, to be very honest, after that incident, I didn't want to have anything to do with Filipino men. She felt a little bit of a disgust kasi nga ginawa nila sa kanya yun, di ba? So when I think about that, sabi ko, eh ako Filipino ako eh. That is how God works in terms of healing. He allows people who are broken to be able to be healed in a way that only God can say, that's me. If I was to watch the story as an outsider, here is a, a woman, an American, who gets raped by Filipinos in the Philippines and still chooses to marry a Filipino. That doesn't make sense. That's one of the reasons I think maybe God allowed this or chose me for her is to make sure that it is his signature that is clearly seen in the marriage. And then God gave me wonderful children. A lot of people say when they see me now they can't imagine na nangyari yan sa akin. I suppose I also feel that way like when I think about it nangyari yan alam ko na doon pa rin minsan naaalala ko pero I see now yung blessings ni God. We're all broken, broken by sin, by circumstance, by tragedy, by experiences. It's only the Lord who can really heal us. But then when we accept God's healing and we recognize that, then God's the one that makes us precious. God's the one that makes us whole again. And so because I did that early on, after what happened to me, I didn't feel like I was really damaged in that sense. I felt like here I am, a broken person, but by God's grace, made whole, because of what he's done for me and because he loves me so much. Tulad ka ba ni Joy? Sinaktan? Inabuso? Are you trapped by chains of shame? Unforgiveness? Bitterness? Because of the trauma that you experience in your life? You know what? Jesus can set you free. Jesus can heal you. All it takes is a prayer to surrender everything to Him, your life, that pain, that trauma, and He will set you free. Pray with me this prayer. Kailangan lang po nang gagaling sa puso niyo itong prayer. Just say, Dear Jesus, Lord, I cannot forget this terrible, bitter pain that has happened in my life. But Lord, guard my heart. I don't want to be bitter. I don't want to get angry. I don't want to live a life of shame, but I want to experience true freedom. So right now, Lord, I confess all my sins to you, all my hurts, all my anger, all my bitterness, all my shame, I put it at the foot of the cross. And right this moment, Lord, I open my heart's door and invite you, Jesus, into my life to be my Lord and to be my Savior. Starting today, I will walk in your ways. Starting today, I will declare your freedom in my life. I pray this prayer from my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. You look at the life of Joy now and you see her enjoying her kids, her family. She's completely healed. She's been set free. You too can have that kind of life. And that's why we want to continue praying for you because forgiveness is a process. You need to come before the Lord and then release that person, the one that inflicted you so much hurt and pain. Bring that person at the foot of the cross so that the Lord can fully restore you and take you from glory to glory. Okay, right now, our numbers are being flashed on your screen. We're here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Kung gusto niyo pang 
advice from the Word of God, our prayer counselors are ready to give that to you. Just make that call. We're here for you. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted and to set the captives free. Walang tanikala na hindi kayang putulin ng pag-ibig niya. You know the message of the cross? It's a message of victory. That's why Christ came, to deliver you and me. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you.